Hey everybody, welcome back to The Practice. This is where we gather with our small groups and we try to put into practice those things we were talking about on Sundays. Right. And by the way, I have to say, before we get into what we're talking about, <laughs> thank you so much for Sunday. Thank right. you for getting there and getting your life scans done. I mean, I think we got about 90% of them done. That was amazing. Which is amazing because everybody just got the sign-up sheet last week. So right. Short notice. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. There's always going to be some kind of crazy thing we're doing on Sunday, it seems. Because <laughs> next yeah. we got to do some sort of fire drill. And so there's always going to be something. I just... It means so much to me that you guys were able to do that in such short notice. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, we really appreciate that. So yeah, there are yeah, we do have the probably a fire drill coming up this Sunday. So we'll send well, out an I don't email know about if that's that. Be this Sunday or not? But well, we're, at <laughs> some point we got we got to got to have a uh, an we'll emergency you know. drill for the church. So we're working on all the we'll details you know. of that, trying to make all that work. Um, and then, but then two weeks from now, I just wanted to remind you again that it is our mothers and ministry retreat, and I that's really right. want all of the moms. No matter what age your kids are, all of the moms should come to this retreat. Yay. And please, husbands and fathers, <laughs> make please <it> so. <laughs> make this happen. Make this possible. Uh, is registration still open? It is till okay. the twenty third. All right. Okay. So if if you want it, you need to get registered, but because there's also a good meal, and you want to be sure that you get the meal. Um, so that's good. So and sign gifts. sign up for that. There's gifts, there's all kinds of stuff. But it's going to be a great weekend, uh, the last weekend of January. So. Uh, but we're headed into our new series called At the Table, where we're studying the Gospel of Luke. And um, hopefully everybody was able to kind of start reading and getting into Luke's chapter three and, or Luke chapters three and four last week. And then you've started to go on into chapters five and six this week. And uh, But, you know, we were, we're, we're talking about this idea of how much can happen at the table and how the table, um, table fellowship is such a rich theme throughout scripture and how God has designed this beautiful thing for us to be able to come together and spend that time together around a table and, and how the imagery in the Bible of the celebrations and these festivals, it's all centered around a feast and around the table. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we ended yesterday's message by looking at Revelation 3 verse 20. Um, this says where Jesus is, he's talking to the church in Laodicea and he's like, you guys, this is this is not good. You're lukewarm. I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And But then he gives them this invitation, this beautiful invitation to like re-enter into this connection and fellowship with him. And that's how he describes it is, is as a meal. So let, let's look at that again in verse 20. He says, look, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Mm. I just love that. You yeah. know that that's that's how that. he wants us to picture exactly. him. Exactly. And now you think of all the all of the, all the ways you could picture Jesus. Like you could picture him with the whip. Right. <laughs> you could picture him even with a crown and a scepter on his throne. There's right. so many ways that you could picture Jesus. And in this situation even when he's kind of, you know it sounds like he's rebuking them. Right. But this is the image that he gives. Right. This is how his primary way that he wants to interact with us is as a friend at right. the table. Right. So there's a time to bow. There's a time for that. But mainly, he just wants to be able to talk with us. And that's that bigger theme, too, that we started talking about a few weeks ago, about how God is with, with us, being but with. we have to enter into that relationship like where we are also with him. And we, we want to have that connection. We want to have that, that, that really um, intimate feeling of being with God. Not just that we work for God, but they're actually with God as we're doing the things that we're doing. So, you know, as we dig into Luke, we're going to start to see these themes, you know, really start to emerge that, uh, that we get to do life with God and, and Jesus sends out his people to go and do ministry with him and, and being around the table and seeing the things that happen at the different table, we're going to see these things start to take place. I wanted to back up just a little bit though and uh, touch on something um, from chapter three. Um, you know, when John the Baptist was out and he was preaching and I didn't, I didn't get into some of these details um, yesterday just for, for time's sake, but I wanted to go back a little bit and look at the things that he says to the different groups of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in verse seven, it says, John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. 
For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. All right, so John's obviously a, a little heated, right? He's got he's Put got some there. got some passion going on. He's got some conviction, and but and and in this moment, this message really seemed to resonate with everybody that was listening. There was something about it, whether it was the cultural climate that was going on and or whether it was John's presence or whether it was the spirit moving in everybody but it seemed to really resonate so people started responding mm -hmm. when they 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 heard his message they heard his admonition his rebuke and they started responding and mm -hmm. so it's interesting to go through and look at the different types of people that came forward and were like okay well now what then so let's look at that verse 10 what should we do then the crowd asked and John answered anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. And then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? And he replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Mm -hmm. So we see John, you know, addressing these three different groups of people based on you know, those those types of sins that they could get pulled into, whether it was the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, right. the pride of life, you know, I mean, with, in, in, your, in their particular, um, you know, grouping or their, their particular occupation, um, he was able to identify this is the, this is kind of the type of sin that keeps you from the kingdom of God, that keeps you from experiencing a life that God wants you to have. And this is what you particularly need to change. And so I think it's good as we read that for us to be able to look at that and go, okay, I'm going to ask myself this question. <laughs> what do I need to change? Yeah. You know, if you were standing there in front of John the Baptist and you were like, okay, but what about me? What, what would he say? What would he say? Right. You know, what would he say to the South Orange County Church? Right. What would he say if we just got all of the husbands, all of the men in the South Orange County Church in a room and we said, okay, John. What, what do we need to do right. to be able to clear out our hearts so that we can more actively participate in the coming kingdom? What if it were all the women that were all in the room at the same time mm -hmm. and asking John, okay, John, what, what do you think that we need to uh, address or what, 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 what do, do we, we need, need to change? change? Mm -hmm. How would he answer you? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's so good for us to be able to look at with, with this, you know, and, and really take stock. And that's why we started doing the exam at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we're always talking about really looking inward and being aware of it. Because here's, this is the truth for any of us. It's easy to settle into a routine um, to where our Christianity or our spiritual life just becomes habit and routine. And we're just doing it. And then you add on, um, for those of you that have been around for 20 to 30 years, you add on, man, I've been doing this for a long time. I've gone through it all. I've seen it all. I've been there. And now you're going to talk about this. And now you're going to talk about this. Uh, you combine that with the, 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 the disappointment of how things have not always worked out the way that I wanted them to. Um, or the, the hurts that have happened um, from certain church situations or certain leadership um, things that have happened, you know, like you combine all of that and what it creates is a spiritual apathy where we will sometimes just kind of settle in and I come to church and I'm there and I am a part of my small group, but it's not like that there's a real spiritual fire going on and we are aware of it and we miss it, but we're not quite sure mm -hmm. what to do about it. And this is where I think God is wanting us to kind of identify that, like what is the spiritual apathy perhaps that is going on in your heart that is keeping you like what how are you justifying your lack of radical discipleship i'm not talking about radical schedule where you're you know what maybe what some of us used to do in the campus ministry 25 years ago i'm talking about a radical discipleship to jesus where you apprentice yourself to him and you're like i'm gonna be like him I'm going to pray like him every day. I'm going to give my time to God the way that he did. I'm going to give up my life for other people the way that Jesus did. I'm talking about a radical discipleship that becomes more and more um, like really codified and heated up the older that we get and the longer that we are Christians. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I don't say that enough. 
I don't say that. Not, I was, I'm with you. I was okay, tracking. Good. <laughs> and I wasn't sure. If, you know, do you, do you want to go to the next scripture? What do you want to do? Good I, job, babe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. What? Here's here's actually what I want to do. What what I want to talk about. I, I want to talk about our small groups for a second. Because. Um, you know the the at, as we look at our small groups, can let, let's just think about this for a second because, you know, what we've talked about for the last couple of years is that our primary identity um, that we want to have when we think of church, we want our primary identity to be with this group of people that that we go through life mm-hmm. with. That these are the people that I call when things are going on during the week. These are people that I call when I'm having a rough day. These are the people that see me dealing with my wife and my kids on a regular basis and can actually speak into that. These are the people that I'm habitually um, sharing my life with and, we're, and we're, we're together working on this. And small groups, they, they really have to function um, in a way where everybody does a part. Right. Um, a small group that only has the small group leader organizing everything and connecting everything, mm-hmm. that is not a group that's going to function well. You have to have everybody in the group going, okay, I'm going to do this. And, um, you know, I, our, out with, with our small group, we love our small group. Yeah. And it's great. Uh, one of the things that is so great about it is that we, you know, have gone through, like, it's not a group that we feel like that we're the only ones who are participating or we're the only ones who are leading. There's so many great people in our group. And we, right. you know, when we meet, uh, a different couple has the responsibility every time we meet, every month. Uh, for you know, taking care of everything on that day and making sure that the lesson uh, or the discussion is what it needs to be, or that that the activities that we're doing or the meals that we're having, like somebody, you know, we're always passing around the responsibility, and everyone in our group steps up mm-hmm. to help make sure that the group really runs well. Mm-hmm. And I really love that. Yeah, I love our group too. It it comes down to the same thing that I think that John was doing. All these people are showing up. And he's basically, they're saying, what do we need to do? You know, Mm -hmm. and he's telling them, this is what you need to do. And I think that's how a small group is. Everybody has to come together and say, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. What's my part of the small group? And you know what? We have a really good example of that because I do think that our Sunday services are working really well with everybody volunteering just a little. (laughs) Nobody's doing everything. Um, Everybody's doing just a little bit, you know, once a month being on on duty for something. But I think we have to adopt that same thing into our small groups where everybody knows I'm bringing something to this group and I think you have to it goes back to you know what is the purpose why do these groups exist Mm -hmm. you know life in community is different than just having acquaintances that you know from church right you know how many times do you talk to people and they say oh they go to my church right you know I don't really know them but they go to my church right well this is different than that you know this is not about attendance it's about becoming more like Jesus and having people in your life that actually push you to be more like Jesus, not by doing this, but usually by sort of having to do things together. And sometimes it doesn't work out. And then you learn from that interaction that you had that you can learn how to be more like Jesus. Right. You have to start thinking through, you know, um, what is, how do I view my small group? Is it something that I was assigned to? Do you feel like just because I'm a Christian, um, then I have to be assigned to some group mm-hmm. somewhere? Right. Um, or is it something, are you an attender? Is it something that you just attend? When you can, um, if your schedule works out. When you can, yeah. If everything else doesn't get in the way, whatever. Right. Um, or are you committed to it? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's the commitment that I make. I'm going to be there. I've got it in the calendar. I'm always going to be, you know, whatever. Or are you devoted to it? Would you mm-hmm. use that word to describe you? I think you got to think about these words. Which word would you use to describe how you feel about your small group? Mm-hmm. Devoted is the is the word that we find in Acts two. You know, right? Um, right. That and th- and that's even different than being committed. I, mm-hmm. I have lots of commitments in my calendar, but being devoted is different. Right. And then, do you see yourself as a stakeholder? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm I'm absolutely invested in right. this group of people. So try to think through how am I viewing myself mm-hmm. in this situation, and and you have to come to it for yourself first, right. and then then you can have a conversation about that. Right, right. Um, you know what what we're really wanting to do here in the South is allow these. Um, relationships that we have to be fueled by our dedication to Jesus and our connection to one another and our commitment to living out the kingdom now the way that Jesus had envisioned for us to live. 
um, where we're we're counter to the culture of 21st century America, mm-hmm. where you know where everybody does their own thing and they might have a church that they go to, but where we have decided this is our community, this is our church, this is where the the most important things that go on in my life are within this group of people right here, and I bring my family into that. This is all, all like you know this is where God has me, and and so God is calling us out into that. You know, we see this um, uh, if you look forward into Luke chapter 5. If we go forward a couple chapters and we, and we see this picture where, where Jesus is, um, you know, he, he goes out and he's wanting to speak and, he, and he's trying to figure out a way to preach. And so he gets on a boat and he, he asks Simon, he asks Peter, hey, can I get on your boat and stand there? So he stands on the boat and he preaches to the crowd that's on the shore. Um, and he ha- then he has this moment um, with Peter that I just think is so profound and significant. It says that when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night (laughs) and haven't caught anything. I get it. Can you relate? I can relate. (laughs) Are you serious? I've been doing this for so many years. How many Bible talks have I gone to? How many small groups have I tried to get together and had people not show up and then I organize everything and then people don't show up and then when they're there, they're not really, they're, they they're not really, really engaged, giving. they're not really giving and I'm trying to, hey everybody, let's talk about Jesus and how many, how many times can I do this and how many, you know, I mean, we can, we can have that response because, you know, disappointment builds up over yes, time it and then it, it like covers over your heart where there's this hard shell around your heart this hard shell of cynicism that really is just disappointed idealism underneath. Yes, truth. And so here's Jesus saying, I want you to put out into deep water. I want you to really catch the vision for what our church could be like. I want you to discover that, yes, even though we have wounds from the past and even though we have baggage from the past and even though there's things that haven't worked in the past and we feel like that we've heard all this before, but instead we're, we're going to let go of some of that cynicism. We're going to let go of sometimes we're going to choose to let go of our realism and we're going to go, I want to hold on to Jesus' view, Jesus' right. view, the idealism of the kingdom that he presented in the Sermon on the Mountain, that he presents all through the Gospels of like, this is kingdom living, and we, this is what is in store for us if we will try. If we will go back to the John the Baptist thing and go, what what do I need to get out of my heart so that I can experience the kingdom, and then go, now I'm, I'm going to go for this. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. That's what we're really wanting to do in the South is like change the way that we think and try to find a new way to really engage some of these old truths. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. So here's what, you know, as we go into the month of January, what I want you to be able to do is to to really kind of uh, have some conversations about your small groups and then how we can continue to make them more and more of what God wants them to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to think through that. Like, okay, I mean, for yourself, uh, am, am I an attender? What was it? Am I, am I assigned to this group? And I'm, am I an attender? Am I committed? Am I devoted? Am I really a stakeholder? Like if the, if, is the group dependent on you or are you more like, yeah, I could go to another group. Oh, sure. I'll join whatever group. Or are you committed to the group that you're in making it everything that it could be? Mm-hmm. So I want to encourage you to do this. I want to encourage you with your small group to start having the discussions about why you exist. What is the reason for us to exist as a community, as this small community of people that we're, we're all going to do our spiritual life together. Why do you do it? Is it just because this is what our church has done for however many years, forever, we've always had Bible talks and small groups? Mm. Or do you see that from the scriptures that there is something beautiful and magical that happens when a small mm. group, a community of people decides to live together like Jesus called them to live? And is that a way that that we could actually have an impact on the rest of the world? Why do you exist? Why does your small group exist? And then once you've figured out the why, don't don't get to the how, because if you start talking about, well, why do we exist? Well, we exist because we get together on Tuesday nights. That's that's the how. Just focus on the why, and then we can figure out the how, whether it's getting together on Tuesday nights or whether you get together at another time or however you connect and commit to one another how are you going to accomplish the reasons why you exist? Mm-hmm. So I want you to imagine what if you could have some discussions in your group that helped you to figure out the why 
And then you figured out how to have a declaration, like this is the how, this is how we're gonna commit to this. And then once you figure out that declaration of this is the how, then you have a celebration and you have a meal together and you're like, this is it. Our, this, our, for our group, for 2023, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to figure it out. So consider that. You know, I know some of you, um, there, there's some movement going on right now in some of the groups and some of the groups have uh, changed uh, and so some of you may be feeling like I don't have a group at the moment and I'm kind of flailing. We want you to be in a group. Some of you have not been in a group at, actually ever since that we've been here in the South for the last couple of years. Please consider joining a group. Mm -hmm. It's time. This is how we're going to be doing church in the South. And if you're not actively committing yourself and devoting yourself to a small group, you're going to be missing out mm -hmm. on what God is going to be doing through yeah. us and on the, the, the focus of what we're going to be talking about. So we really want to invite you to, to jump in to a small group. And if you need a small group, you can call us. Call us. Call us. Don't think, oh, they're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to call us. Right. We'll talk. And don't, don't ask us for a list of where all the small groups are and where they meet. Call us and talk to us about what you're wanting and what, what's going on in your life and let us help give you some insight and some uh, you know advice uh, and some, uh, some things to think about as, as you're trying to figure out where to go next. Because we want to walk that through with you. Mm -hmm. We want to take all those steps with you and help you to be able to do that. So there you go. John the Baptist, what do you need to change? Put out into deep water. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, the last thing that Jesus, the last thing that Peter says is the best. Because he says. It is. I didn't even say it. I didn't even say it. <laughs> he says. But because you say so, Jesus, right. I will do it. I will and do it. I have to admit that that is very much how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired or whatever. You know, right. I, I get to this point, I'm like, no. And then I go, but because you say so, because Jesus. Because you say so. Yeah. I will do it. Right. So let's move forward into this week with that attitude. Read chapters five and six as we head into Sunday. And have a great week. Love you guys.